Both. Now, Andy Kershaw uh, has got something that you may not know about David's first big hit. Ground control to Major Tom. First released just nine days before the moon landing in July 1969, Space Oddity became David Bowie's first big commercial hit. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Space Odyssey is such a familiar song, it's hard to imagine it performed in any other way. But Bowie had originally intended it to be sung as a duet. And I'm about to meet the man who helped to create the song and first recorded it with him. 
No, 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 no. Good to see you. Musician John Hutchinson, known as Hutch, was Boy's musical collaborator and friend in the 1960s and 70s. John, how did a young lad from Scarborough come to meet and then play with David Boy? Well, it was kind of by accident. I found myself in London uh, in the Marquee Club. I asked in there if anybody was looking for a guitarist. They gave me a number and I did an audition. I can't the time of day. In 1966, Hutch became the lead guitarist for The Buzz, a new backing band for David Boy. What were your first impressions of him, Joe? You've got to say that the first thing that hits you, he's got this great voice. The songs were strange, but even that was great to do something different, you know? Mm. Sadly, David Bowie and the Buzz didn't get enough gigs, and Hutch went home to Yorkshire. But in 1969, he came back to London to join David's new experimental group, Feathers. We were very much just three people trying to do what David had in his head, you know, which, which was a multimedia trio. There would be dance, mime and poetry. And my part was to play guitar and turn the tape machine on when he did his mime bits, you know. But as, on a personal thing, we, we became friends, yeah. When David split with his girlfriend and Feathers broke up, Bowie and Hutch continued to work together. We were going to be Simon and Garfunkel. Bowie and Hutch. <laughs> so we did record some stuff, including Space Oddity. While David always wrote his own songs, Hutch, as the better guitarist, often helped him to achieve the sound he wanted. Major sevenths. They're not exactly a jazz chord, but they're a sweeter chord than a... So he would have said, yeah, we'll use that. Would you say that you helped him change the mood of the song, or, or the, the, yeah. the tone of it? Yeah. I used to do that with all the things we did. I'd come up with riffs, you know. Together, they recorded the first demo of Space Oddity in David's bedsit in early 1969. This version has since been released on vinyl, and it has Hutch singing the part of Ground Control. Ground Control to Major Tom. That's me. Ground Control to Major Tom. Take your I liked it, yeah. And well, I like it too. <laughs> Never heard it before. This is ground control to Major Tom. Although the demo track was used in this film, with David mining Hutch's voice, Hutch wasn't involved, and he didn't feature in the final version of the song released later that year. I mean, I, I was sitting at my day job, the drawing board, and I heard, uh, heard a guy through the window outside singing Space Oddity. Ground control to Major Tom, so I ran outside. And this is in, like in Scarborough? Back in Scarborough, yeah. So I heard it through the window. And wow. Said, Where'd you get that from? He said, oh, it's on the wireless. Were you disappointed you weren't on the commercial release? I suppose I must have been, but I've never, I can't remember being disappointed. I was definitely more, more sort of chuffed that finally he'd got something out. He'd last that a hit. At the time, there might have been some sort of, hmm, but yeah, I didn't kick around for a couple of moments. <laughs> To celebrate the song being 50 years old this year, I asked Hutch if he'd sing his part again. Ground control to Major Tom, your circuit's dead. There's something wrong, can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? If David brought the song to me today, that's what it'd sound like. <laughs> That oh, was beautiful, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you enjoyed that, David, didn't you? Gra Control to Major Tom Take your protein pills and put your helmet on
your tongue You've really made the grave And the papers want to know Who shirt you wear Now it's time to leave the capsule If you dare This is Major Tom to ground control I'm stepping through the door And I'm floating in a most peculiar way And the stars look very different today Here am I floating round my tin can Far above the world Planet Earth is blue And there's nothing I can do
the volume because we've got a wonderful guest a man who has entertained us all over North Yorkshire who's worked with David Bowie sang with him and be, was in touch with him right up until he passed into the great jukebox in the sky and he's called John Hutch Hutchison also known as Hutch and he's a marvellous guitarist uh, younger Reinhardt is only trotting after him but uh, and he played with Bowie and they were very close friends and he's our guest today so what a gentleman he is but let's hear uh, changes and then we'll meet the great man himself John Hutch Hutchison for your pleasure changes there by David Bowie uh, with backup singing by my guest John Hutch Hutchison who many years ago in Troll is all in Scarborough still does and uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome back to the humble Dr Rock show and I know We'll talk about your good friend David Bowie and how you've known him over the years. But we are interested in you today and your music. And thank you so much for coming in to the Humble Doctor Rock Show. No, it's a pleasure, Charlie. It's yeah. a while since we've uh, done this. Yeah. Did it a few years back. I remember playing live in here once yeah. a few years back. Yeah, yeah. I must say that uh, uh, I, when I first came up from London, I had been to the Marquee Club where you guys had played. Uh, I thought, oh, this fellow shouldn't be in Scarborough, he should be out and around. I didn't realise you'd actually been touring with David Bowie and, mm. and singing with him on the next track. Can you, can you just tell us about that? Yes, this track is probably David Bowie's, or this song is probably his most famous song, Space Oddity, is the first uh, time most people heard of David Bowie and it still has a lot to do with him. This version is actually on a 2009 re-release of his David Bowie album. Yeah. And he, David was good enough to get in touch with me before they put it out, asked me if it was OK to, uh, to use this track and uh, another track called An Occasional Dream. But the Space Oddity track in particular is interesting because I sing uh, the other part of the song. Yeah, Bowie wonderful. wrote the song for both of us. Lovely. He was he was uh, major major Tom and I was ground control. Lovely. And before we hear that, just a little bit about how you first got together with with David Bowie. Yeah, pure chance. I was sort of uh, as you suggested, needing to escape from Scarborough yeah. uh, when I was in my late teens. Anyway, yeah. and I happened to be in London, walked into the Marquee Club. And asked the guy, the one guy in there, uh, if he knew of anybody that needed a guitar player. Hmm. And he gave me a phone number. That turned out into an audition with David Bowie's wow. manager and David himself in the Marquee Club a few days later. And uh, it worked. I got the gig. 
Mm. Wonderful club. I, I used to saw, see all kinds of people there. Yeah, I used to get yeah. in for free. Oh, well, you're lucky, we, man. <laughs> I was a student in those days. Because, we, yeah, we had a, a residency yeah. uh, called the Bowie Showboat, funnily yeah. enough. To well, you, you became obviously very close friends because you spoke r- right up to his pa- recent passing. Uh, how did you find him as a, as, as a friend and as a human being? Because I mean, he never seemed to be big-headed in any way. He just wanted to project images all the yes, time. Yes, that's right. He, he, uh, he wasn't big-headed ever in any way. Yeah. Uh, but he, fame changed him, as, as he said himself. Yeah. Fame and too many drugs and uh, too much adulation, you know, which comes with fame, I suppose, changed him. And it also put him out of touch of an old friend, or more than one, actually. Really? There's a few of us that yeah. we have been in touch. Uh, my good mate, Johnny Cambridge, who plays on my new CD, yeah. the drummer, he, a very old friend of David's, he was at his first wedding to Angie. Yeah. Uh, he lost touch as well. Wow. And there are others. But we managed eventually to get in touch by the magic of email. And you did come to the launch of my Little Richard book in London. Yes, really. So, and we were expected in uh, Davis as well. Yeah, yeah. Was well, but I know that that book, your book, the yeah. Little Richard book, yeah. was one of David Bowie's top 100 listed right. uh, favourite books of all oh. time. Uh, he's a nice lad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good book, Charlie. It's a... Now, let's hear this classic song, because it is a classic. It's, it's like a miniature play, mm. beautifully executed. And we hear you on it with the great David Bowie. I'm ground control. And <laughs> folks, ground control. <laughs> well, John, there you are with. Uh, your good friend David Bowie and uh, the harmonies on that and the atmosphere are, uh, is excellent. So you must be very happy with that. Yes, I liked that when it came out. I was uh, I was pleased that, that it came out. <laughs> yeah, that's you right. walked down uh, uh, Scarborough with your head in the air. Uh, York, you were, you were based. In I was York, probably right? in York then. Yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah. I lived in York until about seven years ago, and then moved out to the East Riding. Yeah, yeah. yeah we'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, we move on now to a song called "An Occasional Dream." So. Mm. What can you tell us about that? It's just another track that David put on that 2009 album and uh, and credited me with. That's excellent. Uh, and it's just another of his, well, really good songs from that era. And we both sang on it, yeah. Lovely. And just can we ask a little bit about, you know, the first meeting with it and how you became friends? Well, to begin with, just getting a gig in his band in the Marquee Club days, that was... Uh, Literally, he needed a guitar player. That's and right. uh, we and you were the boy. I was the boy, and he needed an organ player yeah. in the band, and I got yeah. Chow Boys down from yeah. Sherbourne, yeah. near Scarborough, yeah. to play Hammond organ with us. Oh, so nice. we were the first two Yorkshiremen, and we played with that lineup for a while. That's and while, while we were doing that, we became friends. That's excellent. More so in the later years, because I played with David three times, three different eras, really. And it turned out to be an occasional dream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You are listening to Dr. Rocker. My guest is John Hutch Hutchison, uh, a great artist in his own right, but he was also a very close colleague and worked and sang and played with the great David Bowie. We'll hear more about that later. Laterly. But a few weeks ago, I, I got a, a, a CD from him and I thought this is really good stuff. So I got on the phone to him and invited him on the programme. And it is an excellent one. And uh, there's one song we'll be playing about, which is very much based in this glorious city of York here in York. And uh, we got to a song called Standing Room now. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I'd written two or three songs that uh, I quite liked, and that really what made me think I should record them, and I hadn't done any recording for quite a while. This is just one of those, but it's uh, it's probably the most philosophical of the few songs on it. It's mostly a kind of blues album, acoustic guitar and blues. Some and my, lovely tracks are, don't you? Yeah, you my daughter few? had a lot to do with it. My daughter Haley, she sang harmonies, and uh, her husband Sam Forrest, he produced it for me. And mm. It was a collaboration, really, with the family. Uh, but the song itself is saying that um, time may well be running out 
you know, especially when you get to our age, Charlie. Absolutely, and we're over to, 21. We, we can will really admit to that. You <laughs> have to accept that. Physiologically speaking. Yes. And uh, it was something one of my neighbours said that uh, brought the words uh, into being. Um, you know, and uh, it's it's a it's a point of view really at this time of my life. You know, <laughs> <laughs> do tell us about the next story because that's a lovely story about the what uh, about how she says. Oh might. well, okay. <laughs> she said uh, she said she would pray for me, and I thanked her and said, you know, I have my doubts about this business because there's going to be a hell of a lot of people up there, you know. And she said, well, that's okay. We're all going to be there. My cats and my dogs and everybody I've ever known, we're all going to be there. And I'm that's saying, awesome. well, said, there's, no, there's going to be only standing room up there. <laughs> she said, no, we're all going to be very, 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 very small. Oh, no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is Chuck Berry, and you're listening to Dr. Rock. What could be better? Many thanks, Chuck, for doing that jingle, and uh, you're listening to the Dr. Rock Show. I have the wonderful John Hutch Hutchison, who is noted for working with David Bowie and singing with him and touring with him, but in his own right, he is a wonderful musician and well-known locally and uh, lives in the wonderful village of Tween. Yes, Thwing, Charlie. That's right. As in the Sultans of Thwing. That's right. Wonderful. <laughs> I was very amused by that. Yeah. That was wonderful. Isn't well, it? they're just friends, you know, that live in that area, and we play every couple of weeks. Keeps me uh, from going too rusty. No, we must get down to business here because you've got a wonderful uh, mini album out, mm. six wonderful tracks. Uh, you very kindly sent it to me a few weeks ago. I had it on in the car. If somebody pinched it, uh, I, I, because it's such a great CD. In old my hat, opinion. old hat, old hat, old hat. <laughs> anyway, um, one of my favourite tracks, and in fact, uh, I dare say it, my favourite track was "Joe Won't Dance," mm. and uh, I thought that was wonderful. And there's a lot of hints of the glorious city of York in it. Well, it, it does mention one of my neighbours, um, and I sort of put a line in about him and his wife when they were young, dancing down Micklegate. That's oh, right. Lovely. But it could be anywhere. But yeah, York. Was, I was living in York at the time. Yes. Lovely. Well, turn the turn the volume off, folks, because this is an excellent record, in my opinion. From the album "Old Hat," song by John Hutch Hutchison. And John, it's a wonderful little album. I had it in the car playing it over and over and somebody pinched it. It was so good. <laughs> so uh, uh, thank you for bringing us in and, and playing it. And um, we move on now to talk about your village life because you live up on the walls there and uh, you've got nice community, neighbours and so on. Yes, we, we've got a good little musical sort of community, really. I, I play maybe every two weeks in... Uh, a pub in Wold Newton, the oh, Anvil, right. and we jam up there, and guys come up from Scarborough and across oh, from right. York sometimes. Yeah. And the Sultans of the Sultans of Thwing. Yeah, yeah that's right. Lovely. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, it's a fairly flexible lineup, you know. Yeah. So whoever's yeah. around quite yeah. often. Um, but we have a gig coming up where um, we'll be doing a proper gig, if you like, at the uh, at the brand new uh, Foxholes Community Hall. That's in the little village of Foxholes, which is just up the hill from Staxton. That's great. Uh, and they've got a brand new hall, which was paid for mostly by uh, lottery money, and it's That's a wonderful, great. it's a wonderful wooden and glass, very Scandinavian kind of village hall, uh, lovely excellent. place. So they've only just opened, and they asked us if we might be the first band to put a sort of uh, music thing That's on. Great. You know, just a reflection on your past. You did meet Bernie of the Abbo in, when you worked in in Nor Norway. No, it? no, Sweden, Sweden, uh, Sweden Swedish band. band. Yeah, cool. Uh, Benny Anderson was in one of the bands that was playing in Gothenburg when I was there. Yeah, I Went didn't on really, to become Abba. Yeah, that's right. So I didn't really, was... I didn't really know Benny, but uh, he was the piano player you know, yeah. in one of the other bands when I was there with the Apaches. Yeah, in the sixties. Yeah. Uh, but I was going to tell you about the, the Fox Souls gig. That's on the eighteenth, folks. If you're doing nothing special on Saturday, the eighteenth of February. We'll Take a trip a, up to... Yeah, that's right, yeah. to Foxholes Community Hall. That's You'll have to ask where it is. It's tucked in behind the houses. <laughs> that's excellent, yeah. <laughs> now, we go back to uh, your sojourn with your friend uh, David Bowie, late friend who mm. you spoke to. You spoke to him right up on the end. Uh, well, well, he handled that very well. And yes. How did you feel about that? 
Well, as you say, we were in touch. We didn't actually speak. He he only ever phoned me once, and that was quite a few years back. But we were in touch by email. The, yeah. the great thing about emails is that uh, he, he could come back with one-liners, and apparently he did it with everybody. Yeah, yeah. I've seen other people that um, have said the same thing. He'd, he'd be fairly cryptic sometimes, and there would never be much more than one line. So you yeah. wouldn't talk about family and how your holidays went or anything like that. That's but right. I would get in touch and say, I've just done a new CD. It's in the post here, for yeah, example. Right. Yeah. And uh, I did do that. I did it with both my CD and my daughter's CD, and he was complimentary in both cases. That's lovely. That's uh, I even asked him if he needed a guitarist. Had he got enough guitarists? And he said, I think I've got about six at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I never managed to get another gig, but uh, it was on that worry. level, you know. And we did talk yeah. right up uh, yeah. until just before yeah. he died. Um, yeah. John his, Cambridge. The impact of his death, especially in the States, I couldn't believe the carry on in New York. It was just it was huge, ramifications yeah. Of, yeah. of his death was just amazing. It was. It was quite. Uh, uh, that, yeah, I was surprised at that, but I was also shocked because uh, we had no idea, yeah. you know. Friends, even quite uh, people that saw him, uh, a lot of them didn't know about it. Wow. Tony Visconti and one or two others did, yeah. um, because he had to tell them because he was working with them. That's right. But basically, he kept it secret. And even when I sent John Cambridge and I sent him a daft selfie from a gig in um, in a pub um, in Driffield, and we got a reply, an instant reply from David Isn't that lovely? Uh, at the gig. You know, it was just a funny daft. Uh, text, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but so we thought he was fine, you know. He, he obviously uh, hadn't taken exception to my book, my yeah. Bowie and Hutch book. Oh, he, he liked the book. He, well, uh, well, he'd read it and um, he didn't object to it. Um, but oh, I'm I, sure uh, he loved it actually because it's quite a good book. <laughs> uh, it's well, called Bowie and Hutch. <laughs> yes. And it's available on the net, is it? It is, yeah. You buy it through Amazon and yeah. it's called Bowie and Hutch. If you Google Bowie and Hutch, you can pick up the the book, Bowie and Hutch book, and you can pick up this new CD that we're talking about. Excellent. But I, I should probably mention, Charlie, that not long before David died, I had um, I emailed him to ask him uh, if he would agree to being painted for the National Portrait Gallery. Yeah. I have a friend in, uh, he lives in Spain now, yeah. who's a well-respected portrait painter. He's yeah. done lots of top, top people. Top people, you know, people with pots of money, politicians, pop stars, film stars. Yeah. In fact, he he, uh, he winds me up by sending me photographs of himself with the latest one, Leon, Leonardo DiCaprio, and whatever. Oh. Anyway, he's, he's actually <laughs> oh, he's actually he's a mixed scar for good people, folks. <laughs> yeah, he's anyway he's a Scarborough guy, painter that a lot of people in Scarborough might remember, called Alan Hydes. Yeah. Alan had been asked to produce a portrait of the icon of our era, yeah. and this was going to be David Bowie. Yeah, I knew that Bowie would be interested in that, so yeah. I don't normally didn't normally pass on requests or yeah. messages or anything yeah. but i passed that request on because yeah. i knew he would be interested he yeah. would he knew oh, yeah he likes the art yes yeah. and he he knew alan hides as well Did he? a lot longer stories involved in this oh, but great. i think he would have been well pleased and i'd said to him you're the man for that job you know you should I'm, i know you're going to be interested now i didn't get a reply and i thought well okay it's christmas new year yeah, yeah. i didn't get a reply because david was very poorly. Very, very poorly. Yeah. And that, for me, was the shock. I almost emailed him the day he died or the day before yeah. to say, how come you're not wanting yeah, your yeah. portrait painting? I think it was quite a shock for all of us. Uh, really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear you doing now from your wonderful new CD, The Spaceman Blues. Mm -hmm. You sure can play the guitar, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Segovia would be envious. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention Martin Offler. Yeah, well, okay. No, you sure know how to play. Now, uh, as a member of your family, you said, um, had, had notoriety for her music as well. Yes, Haley, uh, my daughter Haley Hutchinson, she did quite a lot from sort of mid 2000, I suppose 2000. Uh, nine or something like that. She she put an album out, and one of the tracks on the, it, there sort of got radio coverage, and yeah. and all kinds of people played it. But the most un, unlikely was uh, uh, Terry Wogan. He picked it up and made it his record of the week. So, That's lovely. You know, there was others, Bob Harris, and uh, oh, other people that uh, liked Haley's stuff at that time. Yeah, and Haley toured quite a lot uh, as as a support act. Did she enjoy it? 
I don't think she enjoyed it. No, no. But I did one of her tours, and yeah. and um, she found it hard work. She well, wanted her own so. band, and yeah. she didn't particularly want a dad driving around the country. To be honest, I know. <laughs> uh, and we we did a bit of that just because I she... can understand that. <laughs> My daughter gives me a hike as well. That's right. <laughs> Uh, these days it's much different and she sang very well on my new CD yeah. uh, but when she made her own CD I played on a couple of the tracks including the one that I see that you're wanting to play I put guitar on this and we did it with the Shed 7 guys um, and it was a song called Here's the Love Lovely You are listening to Dr Rock and I'm honoured to have John Hutch Hutchison on here a great songwriter, a great performer He's entertained many people in North Yorkshire, around the villages, and all over. But, of course, he's also very famous for working with his good friend, the late great David Bowie. But he's got this new CD out called Old Hat, song by John Hutch Hutchison. And we just heard his lovely daughter there with a wonderful song, Here's the Love. And uh, you're playing on that one as well. Yes, I did. I did uh, some of the sessions. It was most of the Shed 7 guys, very talented players and, uh, right. and the production too and, but they let me in the studio for one day I think that's lovely sure they <laughs> did I'm sure they did we go back to the old hat this new uh, CD uh, and we're going to listen to nothing but the blues that's great there you are nothing but the blues from old hat the new CD by John Hutch Hutchison and it's a great pleasure to ha have you here and you I know you must have marvellous memories of touring and playing with David Bowie uh, mm. All over the states, uh, mm. uh, some extraordinary incidents, no doubt. There's a lot, and uh, I I put it all in the book. And uh, funny enough, if you, with writing your memoirs, quite often you remember some stuff and forget other stuff. And I'm sure I'm pretty much like that. Yeah. Uh, but I had the advantage that lots of other people. I, to, I have maybe a dozen Bowie biographies at home, and quite often <laughs> my stories were in their books. <laughs> and I, my research involved reading quite a lot about that past you know yeah. but I remembered enough stories certainly yeah. and as I as I started to write the book um, I realized that uh, things were coming back to me they yeah. do yeah. they're still in there you know yeah. in in your memory well, so there must be some amazing incidents though that come to mind yeah I mean I I'd, I'd sort of avoided as you can imagine putting anything in that put me in a bad light um, and to a large extent, I left a lot of stuff out that might have put David in a bad light. Yeah, yeah. I did actually have a, a whole chapter about my point of view on David's half brother yeah. uh, and his illness and uh, early death. Yeah. And it troubled David a lot. I knew that, but yeah. I found it all quite interesting. And I did write uh, because I'd been to David's house, met his mum and dad, and yeah. but never met his brother, so I had a perspective on it. Yeah. But I decided to take it out because I didn't want the book to... Yeah. Did his folks still live down in Bromley? Well, he's, they did. Um, I'm not sure if his, his mum's still alive, oh, but yeah. uh, it could, I'm not too sure about yeah, that. Yeah. But certainly they stayed there and his, his family's still from that area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I tailored the book to what I thought might interest people. And funnily enough, mostly I was thinking I was talking to people like like you, yeah. that are from this area, remember me from when I was in the Tennessee oh, and yeah, the Dave Kirby Five well, in, yeah. the, in the 60s, stuff. in the early rock and roll days, if you like. So right, yeah. I didn't think people outside this area would be that interested. Yeah. Um, oh, but a lot, of, a lot of Bowie fans have uh, bought the book and continue to buy the book. Uh, That's great. Because it's probably, apart from Woody Woodman's new book, uh, the only ex-musician book. Yeah. And anyway, I knew Bowie for years more than, than Woody did. He was in the popular famous band, of course, but he only yeah. knew David for two or three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and maybe not so much as a friend. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I put stories of life on the road, as we yeah. say. I had a, a, a delight to mention that he, he, he loved Little Richard. Uh, in fact, he did a piece on American TV saying, thank you, Little Richard, for... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gave well, we all, race music and all that. We all did. Um, yeah. Little Richard came out, we couldn't believe it. Um, yeah. And and Paul McCartney said the same thing, That's and right. all of us say the same yeah. thing, really. Yeah. And I know David enjoyed your book very much. Uh, yeah. It was one of his favourite oh, books. Yeah. But, very but, grateful to him. Yeah. <laughs> it took uh, a lot of doing, it, like climbing Mount Everest with a broken leg. I imagine it was... breaking the other one when you got the top. Yeah, I know you must have had to work harder at <laughs> oh, that. Oh, very you know, hard. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, David was was connected to the, the past. He, Little Richard, like myself, I, I did gigs with. Well, sorry, one night I, a gig with Little Richard in Harrogate, Harrogate uh, Royal Hall. Yeah. I also played with Gene Vincent and his band at Spa, yeah. Yeah. at the Spa in Bridlington. Yeah. And I know David was a big fan of Gene Vincent as well as Johnny Kidd. No, those guys from that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you know, but David uh, met Gene Vincent in uh, not long before Gene died and right. persuaded him that he should record one of David's songs. And I believe it was going to be Hang On To Yourself, yeah. which would have suited Gene Vincent. He could sing anything, I reckon. Yeah, he could, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, my dear friends, we've had a wonderful insight into John Hutch, Hutchison, who's a marvellous musician, great guitarist, and, of course, friend of the late, great David Bowie. You've had a lot of fun, and, of course, you've got the book out, Bowie and Hutch, and yes, lots of great information, actually. I was very, very, very pleased with it. I thought it was a delightful read and very well, informative. Well, yeah, the, the stories are in there. The, the track you just played <coughs> was interesting. It was part of that album, actually. Is uh, taken from the last gig that we you, played. You played live on Yeah, we played Hammersmith Odeon, and then David went to the front of the stage and said, uh, thank you very much, we, we're packing it in. Oh. So it was a, we got fired on stage, basically. <laughs> uh, but that was the stuff that we played that night. And uh, then he, he he split the whole thing up, yeah. and that story's in there, and uh, quite a lot surrounding that story really as well. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, and so th people might be interested in how life is on the road under those circumstances. Uh, yeah. uh, I bet it was draining at times, but very exciting. I yeah, oh, very totally, uh, totally ecstatic. Yeah, stuff. yeah, no, it was great fun, and yeah. maybe for me, I didn't have to take it too seriously. And I hope folks like the tracks from Old Hat by John Hutch Hutchison. That's on the net, is it? Yeah, it is. In um, fact, both the Bowie and Hutch book and the uh, CD Old Hat uh, are both available. That's if fantastic. you Google it, you'll find it either on my website or on uh, yeah. Amazon for the book. Yeah. Now you talk about David Bowie loving Gene Vincent. I met mm. Gene Vincent uh, in Mansfield. Yeah, right. And I went backstage. Same year he toured us, I, I went guess. up uh, uh, and I shook his hand and then he stepped back and he took out a gun. Because <laughs> he, he he was a, a shooter, you know. Yeah, drugs But fortunately, and guns, huh? he pressed the thing and a flag came out saying, bang, I thought this is the <laughs> end. <laughs> sense of humour then, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, pretty scary sense of humour, yeah. <laughs> Gene Vincent was going to record one of David's... Uh, songs as I said and uh, I think David uh, looked up to a lot of those guys yeah, yeah big yeah. influence you know yeah so we'll hear the, uh, this but thank you so much for coming on and yeah, it was great to pleasure producer, nice to see you again here at BBC Radio York health and happiness to you all tune in next week when we'll plug you into the Cosmic Mainline folks mm -hmm.